following, I'm really trying to understand how to be guided. Like when you're navigating in the illusion and you come up against a fork in the road and you're not sure if you should go right or left or if it really matters which way you go. <laughs> yeah, the topic of guidance. Mm -hmm. Guidance and, and discernment. Mm -hmm. Really, I talk a lot about discernment because, you know, when you seem to have a lot of branches of the road, you know, it seems to be important to really be tuned in and discerning. And there's a section in the Course in Miracles called The Real Alternative, where Jesus makes some very blunt and kind of profound statements. And one of the statements is, is that all of the roadways of the world lead to death. And so it starts to put a, a whole different twist and perspective on this idea of, of choosing uh, which way to go. Mm -hmm. here and there. And I think for most human beings there does come those points along the journey where there seems to be a bit of, oh, just disillusionment. Like, almost like he still want to throw the towel in. Like, oh no, not another uh, dead end. But a lot of the roads that we seem to take as we travel along this journey, they seem to be kind of I mean, they seem to start pretty good, but then the more you follow them out, it's like, you know, am I left holding the bag again? You know, it's like another trick. It just didn't bring fulfillment. There seems to be so many roadways where there's distractions or, he says in the Course, on some roads you travel along gaily for a while, you know, before the, the sadness or the, the bitterness, the harshness comes in. So, to me, it's like working with the Course, what it does is it starts to expose ego, self-concept goals. And I think when you're talking about guidance and decision-making and, and wanting to be clear on, you know, which, which branch to take on a, in a practical level as yeah. you're flowing through a daily life, yeah. the best teaching I found in, in the world, and or in the everything I've come across, and really in the course is is back as you work towards the end of the text called the rules for decision, mm -hmm. okay. which is almost like a practical mind training course in decision making and guidance, where basically you're told to start off with making a decision of the kind of day that you want to experience you know, really honing in on that, really focusing on that. Whatever, however it comes to you, a peaceful day, a free day, a loving day, a free-flowing day. And then coming in with number two, which is, you know, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. And then, when you get into the, the rest of the rules for decisions, those are more when you've, you've, you've come off the beam, you've come off of, you've actually forgotten one and two, and you've been distracted into something else, mm. and then you have to try to get back to the original alignment. And that's where three, four, five, six, and seven come in, you know, it's actually, he says, more difficult to come back after you've gotten off. But that's part of the mind training, you know, to, to, to really have the determination to come back. So, I had a conversation with Jesus one time when I was going through rules for decision, because I was like, you guys, can we get a little bit clearer on this, uh, some of these rules, and I'm particularly interested in this, in this getting off the beam. Uh, what's going on here? How am I allowing myself to get distracted and away from my purpose and my alignment? And I remember reading in that section where he was saying, well, when you are doing this, you're basically asking a question by yourself. And I was like, okay, asking a question by myself, can you, can you give me a little more 
concrete answer than that. It seems a little all right. <laughs> and uh, basically saying, you, yeah, you forgot what to decide. You forgot to stay with your original decision for the kind of day that you wanted. And asking a question by yourself is an example of of not letting, not deciding with the Holy Spirit. In other words, autonomously right. asking a question that really doesn't have anything to do with the purpose or being on the beam. It's like a distracting question. And so I said to Jesus, I was okay, still though, it doesn't, <laughs> you give me something a little bit more than asking a question by yourself. Now I wish I could be more specific about that, you know, but what are you talking about? And he said, okay, well, an example of a question that you're asking by yourself that takes you off the beam, he said, I'll give you the, I'll give you the content of it. You ask this question many times a day in different forms, but I'll give you the basic content of your distracting question. And he said, well, that would be good. If, if I could just get the content of it, maybe I could start to recognize some of the tricks and the forms. And I said, okay, give me, give it to me, what is it, what am I asking when I get off the beam? And he said, well the question you're asking by yourself is, of these illusions, which do I prefer? <laughs> oh, so that starts to help a bit in terms of, of discernment you actually start to go, hmm, uh, you start to see that, wow, there's a preference structure there, it's an ego preference structure, and underneath this ego preference structure there is an identity there. You know, I like whatever, Earl Grey tea, you know, I like my hot dogs with mustard on, or I like vegetarian food with Indian spices, or I like uh, bright, warm, sunny days more than cool, misty, rainy days. You know, sexual preferences, climate preferences, food preferences, you know, across the gamut you start to see that there's this ego identity that has all these preferences and these preference systems in there and how easy it is to get distracted away from really wanting a truly peaceful, loving, joyful day by getting off on a wild goose chase, chasing down some preference system, thinking that if I get what I prefer, then I'll have a happy day. And he was like saying, this is exactly how your mind's working. You know, you're, you get off into these distractions, it could be the simplest, seeming tiniest things. Like, I know for years ago I remember getting up and, and I would be living in a hermitage and meditating and making some organic gardens and occasionally I would rototill or cut the grass or something. But it would be like one day getting up to do some rototilling to, you know, get the garden ready and then the rototiller doesn't start. And then you change the spark plugs and you do all the things that you've learned from your past learning to get the thing to start and the, the darn thing, you know, it's not starting. And then as you go through the day, I'm doing my course lessons and everything, the thing is still not starting, not starting. <laughs> you try a few more things, the gasoline starts leaking out here and you're like, you can, and then at some point, as the frustrations and irritations start to build, as you're getting annoyed, as the afternoon is passing, the day is passing, you can't get the rotor teller started. Then, you know, it's like Jesus comes into your mind and go, says, so you believe that in order to have a happy day, the rotor teller must start. <laughs> yes! <laughs> So then you have to start to look at why it's so important to have a, a machine start. Really, <laughs> really, why is it? Is it a matter of 
happiness or, or not, you know, to have a, a machine starting. And then when you start to trace it in a bit, you follow the roots in a bit, you can start to see that, that there's a self-concept operating down there under the surface, and there's rules and beliefs about what must occur in a day, you know, to be happy. And Jesus is saying, not so. You know, choose with me, align with the Spirit, and, and see how things will get taken care of, and how you will release these expectations and these false self-concept beliefs, and these ego goals that you have set up to, as part of a belief system, that the only way you can have a peaceful, loving, happy day is to achieve these outcomes in form. It could be, you know, being a good mom or a good dad, you know, remembering to pick your child up at school. You know, you start to get, lose your peace. Oh my God, I forgot. I'm supposed to be there at four o'clock. Or you have so many things to do on your to-do list and you start to miss a few of them and it starts to impinge on your self, ideas of your self-worth of being a good employee, a, a good manager, a good mother, a good father, a good sibling, you know, a good citizen. You know, you get, you got the to-do list, you're going around trying to get all your things done, you, you run a red light or you run a stop sign. But you don't even know you're running a stop sign until the flashing lights and siren behind you go, what? What? Roll down the window, what? What? I got too many things to do for this. <laughs> Sir, you just ran a, a, a stop sign. I did. I mean, you know, it's, then you feel a little bit of irritation coming out. Like, I don't have time to deal with a ticket or <laughs> to talk to this officer or whatever. I got too much to do. You see the time pressure thing coming in. Why is it important to get the whole to-do list done? There has to be an identity underneath that, pushing that, driving that. It's not the Spirit. The Spirit's not in there telling you, get this whole to-do list done or you won't make it back to heaven. You know, that's just not the way the Holy Spirit works. It's the undoing of these concepts and these beliefs that are driving the mind. And once we start to loosen from these and we let them, we let the Holy Spirit work through us, then we go from being the doer to being done through, and then we relax more, the stress level goes down, our trust level goes up, and we can hear more clearly the discernment. Okay. Go left, yes. go right. <laughs> not that, not that left, like in the Matrix. <laughs> Okay. There's a door on your left, your other left. <laughs> you know, it's a, you know it's, a, it's a humorous kind of GPS that just keeps nudging us, you know, towards what would be most helpful. Even when we go off and we make the, the so-called wrong turn, the GPS just says, in 200 yards, yeah. <laughs> turn left. You know, it doesn't say, you dummy. You just missed the turn. I like to think of it as a game. Warmer, warmer, warmer. Yeah, warmer, warmer, right. Phoning in, just yeah. refining, refining, yeah. That's it. Thank you.